I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Josh Neroff, the head of product at Anchor. Josh, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. Yeah, Ashton, great to be here. Uh, thank you for having Anchor on the show and myself too. You're very welcome. A lot to cover in the world of DeFi, staking, liquid staking, Ethereum, moving on, the markets, what's going mm -hmm. on. Let's cover it all, but let's start with just an overview of what you're working on at Anchor and you know how those uh, solutions apply to the overall blockchain ecosystem, and then we'll dive into all the details. Yeah, so we have this kind of next generation of the internet forming and, and the web specifically with Web3, and that means there's new opportunities to build infrastructure to enable that space. That's what we're doing at Anchor. We have like a suite of products and solutions that enable uh, Web3 to essentially build out and expand as we have uh, solutions for DeFi with liquid staking. And the, the amazing thing about what we're doing is that every use case, every project, every company that's trying to work in the ecosystem needs our products and services that we're offering. Mm. Incredible. Um, and maybe we can just talk about you know, Web3. People, people are hearing about it and they have an idea of what's the difference, but they're so, just like the internet, there's so many different faucets of, of what you could be going into. And I know mm -hmm. DeFi is a big thing, but um, maybe you can talk about what are the main priorities and what are the second priorities or, you know, what are all of the branches that you're reaching out into? Yeah. So I think web, web three is definitely defined. There's, there's several definitions and this means different things to different people, but I think the central idea is really around ownership. Um, well, you know, there's there's many kind of movements that have picked up steam lately, like right to privacy, right to ownership. And as, as we talk about Web3, like a great comparison is, I think we all are familiar that Facebook is kind of the poster child of Web2, right? It's a uh, sharing media at the expense of your data. Uh, Web3, in contrast to that, is, is really about owning your data, being able to move it, and having ownership of the system that you're contributing to, as whether it's through your own uh, work that you're doing, or maybe it's through some data that you're providing, or some service that you're performing for, for the website, or, or whatever it is. Um, and that's exciting. It's exciting to people. We live in an age where it's harder and harder to buy housing around the world. We see how, we've seen inflation going up, especially younger people are very excited about web3 because it gives them frankly the digital ownership in something digital ownership basically an asset that can rise in value and a digital asset that can rise in value so it's getting a lot of traction i think I, i'm seeing kind of a multi-generational excitement about it but especially kind of gen z millennials are really looking to web3 as the future definitely and i feel like that's just expanding in all faucets, including DeFi, staking, just overall taking back control of, of your finances uh, and NFTs with ownership already being integrated into Twitter. And I did hear that Instagram and, and I'm sure Facebook and the rest of the meta platforms are going to start working on NFTs and either innovate or die. Uh, right yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, people, I, I think there's almost a pushback of how how like public we've gotten with our lives you know the kind of you think about instagram you think about like selfies you think about food pictures you know a lot of people are starting to push back on that idea and like they want to use their avatar as a nft they want to kind of show off their their digital ownership and i think this like we talk a lot about like at anchor like what is gonna what is this concept of the metaverse and i think it's not yeah maybe there's games that we we could associate with the metaverse or virtual worlds, but it ultimately it's more of a trend around our digital identity becoming more and more important, right? Whether it's our ownership in an NFT collection, in assets, or just an online reputation, uh, definitely has a lot to do with our success in our careers. You know, that, that all of that is kind of fueling this fire around like metaverse, web three, all that. Definitely. And I, feel like what's growing the most, there's a lot of metaverse uh, products that are in early stage coming out. And I think people really don't, w don't see the full potential yet because it's not there yet. It's still growing. Yeah. So one, we're oh, very, very early. Yeah, definitely. But one uh, section that really has grown a little bit more because uh, a lot of capital has been injected into it is, is DeFi. And there's different ways you can do DeFi. Some of them, 
not as decentralized as others. You know, you think it's DeFi, but you're really just staking your coins with some central provider and they're having access to them. And maybe you can't get them for a certain period of time or they're locked up and you don't even have access. Um, but there's also liquid staking as well, uh, where you do get some kind of coins collateral, maybe not the exact uh, thing that you uh, put up for lending, but maybe you can talk about how Anchor fits in to that aspect and, and, and where you see that going. Yeah, absolutely. So liquid staking, very simply put, is when you stake to a validator, it's almost like you're making a security deposit, right? And I like to give this analogy for anyone that's rented in an apartment or flat before, you usually have to put a security deposit in to get that rental. And that security deposit is essentially locked up until you leave the building or end your lease, right? And that's very similar with a proof of stake system where you stake assets, you stake Ethereum, for example, to an ETH2 validator, and that deposit is locked up. And right now it's kind of an unknown period. Like we don't know when the, the merger will happen, when we can unlock those assets. And so what liquid staking offers you is essentially a voucher in the form of another token that represents your stake to deposit. And that allows you to exit your position at any time Right. So, for example, if I staked with Anchor on our liquid staking product uh, back, you know, maybe it was a year ago and I need, I'm trying to buy a house now or a car and I need, that, I need that value back, I can sell my liquid staking voucher to someone else, which means I'm exiting my position through the sale and they're taking my position in that, um, you know, that staked asset. So this works really well for chains that have longer locking periods. So for example, Ethereum where, you know, there's, there's not like an automatic unlock or something like that. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And yeah, it's crazy to think that um, some people that using the fully decentralized method stake their ether in the smart contract for Ethereum 2.0 with an unknown unlock date who, you know, it just could just keep getting delayed for years and years. And your capital is just locked in this smart contract until they say mm -hmm. that it's launched. Yeah, well, you know what is is when you did this early on, uh, the Ethereum network was giving like extra rewards in the beginning, and so I was just looking at some of the yields that some of the stakers getting. They're like 20, 30 percent APR right now. Of course, it's kind of came down to like four point five five percent now, with like the merger closer to happening. But uh, there's definitely been some high yields. I think I saw someone that stake 10 ETH and they already have got an estimated like three ETH on that. So it's pretty cool, you know, and the fact is that it's truly DeFi, you know, Anchor is not being a custodian of those assets. Like we are locking into a smart contract, but we're, you know, those assets are still in their wallet technically, right? So um, that's different than what staking on Coinbase would be where they're facilitating everything for you, you know, and it's like you don't have your private keys for those assets. Yeah, definitely. And with this liquid staking, are you, is there a minimum or are you targeting anybody, whether it's advanced traders or just beginning crypto users that just want to stake a little amount? Uh, yeah, we definitely have a retail, like we support retail. I think, what is it? You can, you can stake any minimum of Ethereum on, on our product, but liquid staking, like if you think about it, like the, who's actually the right market for, or the right. I guess, customer or persona that uses that. It's definitely a product that we've seen a lot of interest from, from institutions, right? With some of the larger deposits where they want the ability, especially as an institution to unlock their capital at any point in the network. And that's a feature that they care about a lot about, you know, maybe there's a new opportunity or their investors, you know, want them to go in another direction. Liquid staking is very important for them. But I will say, to answer your question on the retail side, on the individual, you know, trader side, that um, often there's incentives in some of the liquidity pools that um, are out there. And so as you're a retail investor, you might want to um, maximize your earnings and maximize your yields by taking that liquid staking token and putting it in a liquidity pool. And that's helping facilitate the sale of that, right? So you're earning extra rewards on that. So we've seen, you know, in some, some you know, liquidity pools, kind of their incentives can go up and down based on what, you know, Anchor's offering, what some of them are offering, but we've seen people, you know, get double digit APR and above on those strategies. Mm. Yes. And it's not, 
without risk as well. Um, but I have seen those memes where you, you know, you lock up some ETH and they give you a token and then you're able to lock that in something else and then you get another yes. token and you lock that in something else. And it goes through this chain of eventually you're using riskier tokens, getting higher APY, but it is possible through decentralized finance to do that and have control of your funds as well. Yes, um, yes. Now, with, with Anchor, you mentioned Ether, but you also hinted at other assets. Are, are there, what are the assets that you're able to stake on Anchor? Yeah, so, to, so today we support uh, Polygon Matic, we support Avalanche, Phantom, and uh, BNB from Binance. That's one of, um, Binance has a tremendous yield on it. You know, tra traditionally just sticking to a validator, you get 15, 20, 25% APR depending on the validator. And then wow. with our solution, you can even maximize that more. But what I'm most excited about is when we bring in the anchor token itself mm -hmm. into this liquid staking. And that's something, you know, we haven't given the community too much information about yet, but that's going to be huge for us. Mm, very cool. And maybe you can hint at, the obviously that's going to be a big part of growing the ecosystem out uh, but moving forward uh throughout 2022 in the development roadmap that's probably one of the major things is there any tentative timeline on that or any other major updates that we haven't spoken about yeah so um tokenomics is definitely like the, one of the most complex things about web3 as when you have a token you're integrating almost like an economy into your product like we talk a lot about economies on like the national level but in web3 oftentimes you have like an economic system in your product it's not just like a user interface that you're using you got to get it right from the get-go so you know something we're enabling this year in the next couple of months actually is is staking on the anchor token right and so as as i said earlier when i described like what anchor does we have all these protocols projects they're building on anchor infrastructure right and in order to make that decentralized we need to make it a protocol mm -hmm. and so we're bringing kind of the staking into like the computing the infrastructure side and rolling that out through the anchor token and so um, it's gonna have a long locking period uh, several months now and then when you're gonna stake your anchor you're gonna get it, it uh, issued a, a liquid token of anchor itself mm -hmm. and there's going to be some you know amazing opportunities with that so you know it kind of brings our vision full circle you know ashton it's like we've been we're almost like four years old now and like mm -hmm. our community has just been so patient with us like waiting for us but like each piece of the puzzle has kind of came and put in place and we've seen like this year this last you know calendar year like our traffic grew like 20x like it's the adoption is surging in web3 and that's something that is also personally i'm excited about because what's fascinating is the crypto market in general has kind of been like flatlining sideways right but everyone in this space is building right now there's a lot of innovation happening so everyone's been i was at eat denver a couple of weeks ago Sixteen thousand people in the Ethereum community were there and you know i didn't even hear the price of ethereum even once right everyone's excited about the technology the layer two scaling solutions so i think we're in really good shape that's incredible josh and yeah you're right um there's so much innovation going on i, I i've seen it through the episodes on our show that people really don't care uh, uh you know whether there's a little bit of volatility intraday uh, because everyone's focused on the long-term vision um and and i'm sure that's the same with anchor and and i'd love to get your insight into sort of the long-term vision for Anchor and you know where you see uh, the product and, and the ecosystem uh, and DeFi growing out as well. You know, five years from now or three years, if that's too long, because crypto a lot happens really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think in like Web two, we saw you know there's so many companies that enabled from the infrastructure side, like the Web two movement. I think the, the one that's talked about the most is. Amazon Web Services, which makes the lion's share profit for Amazon, right, and drives its trillion dollar valuation. And then we have like tools like Heroku, Cloudflare, we have Twilio, right? all these tools. Twilio is the service that sends you a text message when you order an Uber and you get a text message on your phone. Like all these services are kind of behind the scenes. Like they're not that sexy. They they have good brands, but not well known brands to some can you know the average individual. And I think what Anchor is doing is that for Web three. We're a key part of the infrastructure. I see you know there's I'm very bullish on Web three infrastructure in general. We've seen venture capitalists pour a lot of money into this space, 
I'd say like on the compute side, probably our biggest competitors are Infura and Alchemy. Hmm. Alchemy uh, Consensus, which owns Infura, just got a $7 billion valuation. Alchemy just got a $10 billion valuation. And they don't have tokens, but that's that's the private market valuation. And we're, in some cases, on many of the chains that we support, we have more market share than they do. So I think if anything, like, you know, Anchor, we're, we're pursuing more of this Web3 native decentralized vision, which is harder to build. But long term, I definitely feel like our valuation should go up. And if anything, we're very undervalued right now. Mm. That's great to know. And yeah, I, I, you don't hear about those companies often, but Infura was in the news uh, recently. And I know that there's huge backers and, and the valuation is large, but I feel like it's also going to grow exponentially, you know, 10x and, and more um, in, in the near future here. And so thank you for that like insight. And I'm also curious just on DeFi itself and your opinions moving forward you know, with liquid staking, do you think that will be the norm or do you think some uh, other innovations to DeFi will be like, the norm in a year or in, in a couple of years moving forward? Yeah, so ultimately with staking, like the, the way that these, these things go is that everything's gonna trend toward a better user experience. So what's better for the end user? What's better for the end consumer or the staker, right? So liquid staking makes it very easy to use kind of validators is what it does. It's like a, a one-click experience more or less where you authorize the MetaMask, you lock it, you pay a gas fee, and then you're staking. And so liquid staking improves that with you know, the ability to exit your position. What we've seen actually is um, a lot of interest and in, I think some of the wallet providers on liquid staking and the ability to kind of integrate directly to our smart contract. And so I think what's going to happen is the user experience is going to trend towards the wallet providers and then they're going to facilitate it, but use our infrastructure on the back end, you know, to stake to those validators. So they don't have to run all those validators and build all the DevOps and all the, you know, technical know-how to, to do all the server side stuff. So that's how I see this going. And I think from my perspective, Ashton is kind of like in, in web three, I'm most bullish kind of on, We'll say like kind of three main, um, I guess three main um, verticals. You have your centralized exchanges, which facilitate the on ramp and off ramp into crypto, changing fiat and you know regular currency into virtualized assets. Right. Then you have the infrastructure providers like Anchor, who are doing more and more in the space, and then you have like these decentralized wallet providers like MetaMask, Tally Wallet. Uh, Clover Wallet, uh, CLV, you know, there's many others and so on. There's Phantom Wallet. The wallets are going to increasingly do more. They're going to integrate more. And just like kind of like what Apple did with the iPhone, the wallets are going to kind of vertically integrate more and more of this stuff. So I think the centralized exchanges, the infrastructure companies and the wallet providers are really going to do like the lion's share of the innovation in this space. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh, for all of the information. I'm really looking forward to seeing how DeFi continues to grow and how Anchor will be a part of it. And for the people that want to learn more about liquid staking and Anchor and everything that you're working on with the infrastructure, what is the best way for them to learn more and to get involved? Yeah, so I think I found this on Twitter. We're very, very active on Twitter. We're like 160,000 followers on there, just at NKR. Uh, that's probably the best way to, to start. From there, you can find links to our Discord, our Reddit community. We're also very active. Awesome. I will leave those links both in the description box below. Thank you so much, Josh, for coming on to talk about Anchor. I appreciate it. All the best with everything moving forward. And let's follow up in the near future. Sounds good. Thanks, Ashton.